Thank you very much. Thank all of you for coming out. It's uh, great to be here. I'm a native of Los Angeles. I love California, and this part of California is a little piece of it that is still like California used to be. My hometown is not, and so many are not. What I'd like to do first is for all of you to rise and join me in pledging allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. That hopefully will keep us mindful of the fact that though we often have many complaints against our government, we love our country. There is a difference. As a matter of fact, I find that in going around the country, doesn't matter whether I'm speaking to a group of conservative Republicans in Georgia or liberal Democrats in Eureka, California, or the militia folks up in Idaho. Just about everybody shares that core problem. They love their country, but they fear their government. I think with very good reason. This tour, the Patriot Tour, is designed to help start a grassroots initiative to take back our country. We want a government which does three things. Follows the Constitution, honors the truth, and serves the people. Now that's not asking very much. That may sound rather general and bland. But when you think about it, what a difference it would make if we had a government that actually followed the Constitution, honored the truth, and served the people. I've outlined some of that on my Patriot card. You'll all be given one of these uh, at the end of my talk and before the question and answer period. The organization, The Patriots, which sponsors this tour, is a nonprofit organization, the 501c3. All donations to The Patriots are tax deductible. The purpose of The Patriots is to educate the public about the kind of government that we should have and that we can have. Now, I believe that we in the United States have been artificially divided between right and left, conservative and liberal, Democrat and Republican. Those artificial divisions have been created by the wealthy elite who own both political parties at the national level, who wish to keep we the people divided, and who want to give us the false impression that we really have a choice. So they uh, take the two wings of their party, the Democrats and Republicans, and they say, well, you guys be for abortion and you be against it. You be for school prayer and you be against it. Gun control, that's another good one. Gay rights, that's another one. They divide the American people along these hot button issues that they care nothing about. These issues 
don't affect their bottom line. And they don't really care how it comes out. But on the issues that matter to them, going to war to secure a gas pipeline or natural resources or cheap labor, both parties, they demand, act as one. The same thing with international trade. Remember, it was Al Gore in the Clinton administration who hammered NAFTA through Congress, rammed it down the throats of Congress, twisted arms, and just about destroyed Ross Perot on the issue on the Larry King show. It turns out that Ross Perot, with his giant sucking sound, was a lot more correct about NAFTA than Al Gore. So, there's plenty of blame to go around, but when it comes down to it, it's those big money interests in control of both parties on the issues that matter to them. The problem is, having a government which serves them and serves their interests in those issues <coughs> hurts all the rest of us. And so, that's what I want to talk about tonight. Now, I have, I've had hopes that I could address you tonight as Congressman Bob Bowman. Now, that didn't work out. I ran for Congress in Florida's 15th Congressional District. And uh, I won my primary, beating a mainstream, middle-of-the-road Democrat named John Kennedy. But I lost in the general election to the seven-term incumbent Republican Bushy and his Diebold voting machines. Now, since I can't address you as Congressman Bob Bowman, I chose to address you as President. Bob I'm going to give you my State of the Union address. I want you to pretend that I'm delivering it as the new President of the United States shortly after my inauguration. You will be members of Congress if you choose, or the Supreme Court or the Joint Chiefs of Staff, or just distinguished visitors in the House of Representatives. Seated behind me, of course, are the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate, who is the Vice President of the United States. Your task as members of this august audience is, as usual, to clap and cheer like crazy when you hear something you agree with, and sit on your hands when you don't. 